Welcome to this lecture. The topic for today is front-end engineering. First, let's look at what is front-end engineering. Then we can take a look at some of the features of a typical front-end engineering role. After that, let's take a quick look at some key tools and technologies used by front-end engineers. We'll then take a quick look at some common challenges and also some emerging trends. Let's start by taking a quick look at what is front-end engineering and why it exists. The internet has become an integral part of the lives of many people around the world. Not only does it affect how we work, it also affects how we communicate, stay in touch, stay connected to the rest of the world. Front-end engineering looks to bridge the gap between users and a product or service. This is usually informed by design decisions. Two key areas of front-end engineering are understanding how users use typical websites and applications, as well as understanding user expectations. Web design has advanced rapidly over the years, and as a result, users have much higher expectations and opinions of how web applications should look, feel, and operate. Another important aspect of front-end engineering is having an understanding of not only the company's goals and business processes, but also the user objectives for whatever application or website they're using. This is often balanced against technical debt and any other external constraints that might be imposed on the system. In a typical medium to large software development team, it's quite likely that there'll be multiple front-end engineers that work across various different aspects. Depending on the size of the company or the team, or perhaps the stage of the product, these different roles will have a focus on one area more so than others. Across any of these roles, a solid understanding of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is vital to be able to work effectively. User interface engineers are the typical kind of front-end engineer most people think of if they've come across this field before. These engineers are often more focused on the user side, and they might work on tasks such as development of reusable components, such as buttons, form fields, and layouts, and also ensuring that any reusable components adhere to branding and style guidelines for the company. Often in these kinds of scenarios, the engineers will work quite closely with user experience researchers and designers to develop these components. These components then provide an important framework for other engineers to quickly prototype and build new interfaces. Another type of front-end engineer is the application engineer. Typically, these types of engineers will focus on connecting user interfaces to business processes or goals. For example, a user interface that allows you to access your online banking details, view your statements, and also query previous transactions. These engineers often need to consume data from backend APIs or other data sources. Often these engineers will make use of the common or shared components that have been developed by UI engineers, composing them together on the screen to complete a specific feature or task while also working closely with backend engineers to ensure the relevant API endpoints and data is available for the features to work correctly. Sometimes this type of front-end engineer might also be called a JavaScript engineer. Front-end architects tend to work across an entire front-end development team. While not a strictly separate role, there is often a need in any medium to large team to have front-end engineers that are focused on tooling and infrastructure to help other engineers efficiently and effectively build features or components. This can often involve a wide range of tasks, such as implementing linters to ensure the code base adheres to common standards, automating different processes. It can also involve building out templates or starter kits to allow new applications to be quickly developed, and it can also include configuring build systems to bundle, minify, and split all the code to reduce the size of code that's finally shipped to the user. While all these tasks do not directly impact the user, they can help ensure the development team can quickly ship features consistently and efficiently. Let's now look at some common features found in different types of front-end engineering roles. At a high level, the role of a front-end engineer is to help ensure that users are able to complete goals with a product. The ability to communicate effectively and efficiently, as well as being able to collaborate with peers, helps ensure these goals can be achieved. 
typically in a sufficiently large cross-functional team, so a team that crosses over design, front-end and back-end development, the workflow might look something like this. Designers will develop prototypes for a new user process or flow, detailing a new service that is being designed based on the needs of their users. Backend engineers implement the business logic to execute the tasks, such as interacting with the database, sending email notifications, or taking readings from external data sources, such as the Hubble telescope, for example. Front-end engineers are there to glue these things together on the screen, ensuring the end result is consistent, performs well, and is also robust enough to withstand changing conditions. This type of workflow requires lots of communication and collaboration with other disciplines to ensure the end result always works as expected, or to also ensure that the correct compromises can be made during the software development process based on any additional constraints or challenges that may be encountered. Accessibility and inclusive design. With the explosion of mobile devices, tablets, and wearable devices, websites and web applications now need to function for a wide range of types of users and a wide range of scenarios. Additionally, there are better tools available for users who may have different abilities, particularly, say, users with poor eyesight or those that might struggle with more common input devices. Unfortunately, accessibility is often misrepresented as something that only really matters for users with different physical abilities. But the principles of web accessibility actually help ensure access for all types of users, such as users with a temporary disability, for example, a broken arm, users with dyslexia or other reading disorders, or simply users who may not speak the language that the website was designed in. With the increase in the use of multiple devices, often with different screen sizes, browser orientations and different capabilities, it has become ever more challenging to design and develop web applications and web pages that are not only performant, functional, but also look good across multiple devices and multiple scenarios. Progress has also been made in cross-browser compatibility, now with a lot of modern web browsers sharing the same rendering engines. It's also now a bit safer to assume the presence of JavaScript in most scenarios. This was not always the case, and often required lots of workarounds to ensure a web page still functions. This can still be a major limitation though in some industries, particularly government and financial institutions. One key area of concern for front-end engineers building any application of any considerable size is ensuring they're building a sound and extensible application structure. The architecture of an application can have drastic effects on how maintainable the application is, such as fixing bugs and adding new features, how easy it is to bring on new team members into the project so that they can quickly contribute, and also generally how well the application performs. There are lots of areas that are related to front-end architecture, but managing application state, fetching data and handling asynchronous effects are all key aspects a front-end engineer at any stage needs to consider. Typically for performance and security reasons, all the business logic, user data and any potentially sensitive information will be contained in back-end databases and exposed to the front-end via back-end APIs. This can be a mixture of internal or perhaps external third-party back-end APIs such as a payment processor from a bank. Ajax uses a combination of technologies to provide a consistent way to update user interfaces without requiring the full page to be reloaded. Early approaches made use directly of the XML HTTP request API, which was useful for transferring data between both a server and a client without needing a full page refresh along with making use of the XML format for providing a description of any request data and query response, as well as JavaScript to sequence all these actions. Modern approaches make use of the fetch API and the JSON data format to achieve the same goals. JSON is a lightweight text-based human and machine readable format for representing data. It's useful for not only transmitting, but also serializing data and makes use of the JavaScript object notation. GraphQL is a newer approach to data fetching. While traditional APIs return data in a very specific format, often requiring some transformation or workarounds on the front end to make it useful, 
GraphQL uses a specific query language, allowing clients to query for the exact data they require in the format they require it. GraphQL provides a layer of abstraction that provides both flexibility and additional control to front-end engineers. It also helps to allow for changes to both the back-end and the front-end to be made independently of each other. One challenge with front-end engineering is that it's usually difficult to predict the exact sequence of interactions a user will have with a web application. Therefore, it's important that applications can respond to events that occur at any point in time. The types of events that could occur depend not only on the device, but also the content currently available on the page. And they can be roughly grouped into user interactions, such as clicking, mouse hovering, or touch or scroll events on a device, device events, such as changing the screen orientation, or perhaps the network disconnecting, or content-related events, such as images loading on the page, or media starting to play in the background. Events provide the opportunity for users to signal intent to perform a specific action or an opportunity for engineers to present a change of data or state to the user in a meaningful way. Typically, the state of a front end refers to a few things. The configuration of user interface elements that are currently visible on the screen, sometimes called the view, any data that has been loaded into memory or the application, and actions that initiate or respond to the flow of the application from one state to another. There are many approaches to managing application state, and often new approaches will result in a new framework or library that provides some common patterns. So for example, the Flux pattern has been implemented by both Redux and the Vuex libraries, and it borrows some ideas from functional programming, relying on a separation between actions to initiate a change of state, functions to execute the relevant data transformations, and views that update when changes occur to specific subsets of data. In a traditional web application, any user event such as clicking a button or submitting a form will result in a request being sent to the backend server. The server interprets the request, then generates a new web page as a result to the user. In contrast, single page applications or SPAs load the full application or perhaps a shell of an application and then dynamically make updates to segments of the application as the user interacts with it. So loading more data, rendering new sections of a screen, or perhaps making new requests as the user navigates across the application. There are cons to this approach though, particularly the increase in complexity of the front-end code, and additionally they can cause SEO or search engine optimization issues such as making it hard to link directly to the content that web crawlers are interested in. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the key tools and technologies that are used every day by front-end engineers. No matter which specific framework or tool front-end engineers choose, at the heart of it will be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML is the backbone of any web page, providing a succinct and portable way to describe the structure of a page and also mark up the content for display by a web browser. CSS provides a powerful way to specify how documents are presented. This can include changing the fonts, the colors, or the visual layout of any of the elements in the page. It can also be used for more complex presentation logic, such as animations. JavaScript is the final piece of this puzzle, adding interactivity to web pages. It provides the means to manipulate the HTML document or CSS styling while also reacting to user interactions or initiating requests for further data on behalf of the user. There are many possible approaches that can be taken to structuring and building front-end websites and applications. This has led to an explosion of frameworks, libraries, and tools that all aim to abstract away some of the boilerplate and give front-end engineers more robust tools to build applications that not only perform well at scale, but are also relatively easy to maintain. The dominant frameworks at the moment would have to be React, Vue.js, and Angular. These frameworks have been popularized for building single page web applications that perform and scale well. Not long ago though, jQuery, Backbone, Knockout.js, and MooTools were all also popular frameworks. So it's not uncommon to come across older products that may have been built in these. Build tools, bundlers, and task runners are all important aspects of the front end ecosystem. 
They allow us to perform actions on our raw JavaScript, HTML, or CSS, as well as other assets like images and icons, so that we can do interesting things such as performing transformations in our code to prepare it to be consumed by a web browser. They allow us to check for consistency and adherence to standards. They also allow us to optimize the code that's finally shipped to users. Tasks such as compressing images, minifying and compressing our code by removing things like white space, semicolons, and other features that don't actually affect the execution of the code. For example, splitting a front-end project across multiple files organized in a logical structure is great for developers who maintain a project. But this leads to multiple requests for files being made on the user end, which can slow down the time for the page to load. Using a build tool such as Webpack, we can develop across multiple JS files, then set up a task to simply compress and minify all these files into a single JavaScript file. That single file is then shipped to a user and a single request can be made from the user end for this file. Now let's quickly go over some common challenges and emerging trends in front-end engineering. Some common challenges for front-end engineers include dealing with performance. So ensuring our applications work effectively and efficiently, not only for users who are accessing our application or website on a desktop, but also factoring in devices, but perhaps lower performance or lower capabilities, such as mobiles and watches. Another challenge is dealing with framework and tooling and also language churn. Each new year, approaches are developed that help front-end engineers build and ship applications. If teams aren't too careful with how they adopt changes, this can sometimes lead to a cycle of needing to continually update and migrate applications, often resulting in costly rewrites. Additionally, ignoring updates can also lead to scenarios where the tools are no longer supported or security vulnerabilities aren't correctly patched, and the cost of fixing these or the cost to the business could be quite significant down the track. Another key challenge is ensuring reliability and safety. Front-end engineers often have to deal with interfaces that provide a direct pathway to running applications. And these pathways can provide a good vector for malicious users to attack a system. One of the most common attacks is an XSS or cross-site scripting attack. So this involves an attacker attempting to inject malicious code into a trusted website and then sending compromised code to users' web browsers. This can allow the attacker to gain access to sensitive data such as security tokens or the user's browser history. While not specific to front-end engineering, supply chain attacks are starting to become more common. This generally involves compromising open source libraries or tools that other developers rely on and injecting malicious code. This malicious code might then be accidentally bundled and shipped by an unsuspecting engineer that may not have thoroughly inspected the libraries, tools, and frameworks they depend on. Progressive Web Applications, or PWAs, aim to bridge the gap between web applications and native mobile applications. Typically, native applications require very specific languages and tools for their development. For example, iOS apps which run on Apple devices are written in either the Swift programming language or Objective-C. While native apps often provide the best possible experience and performance, in contrast, progressive web applications can be built using just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Therefore, they're increasingly gaining popularity due to their native app-like experience and also the speed and ease of development, as well as their ability to be served to a wide range of browsers, particularly on mobile devices. There's also been a steady growth in what we call high-level languages for building web applications. Languages such as TypeScript, ReasonML, which is now called Rescript, Elm, and ClojureScript provide stricter languages with additional features and also another layer of safety and robustness to front-end applications. But ultimately, these languages can still be compiled into JavaScript, which allows the final result to be shipped to web browsers. WebAssembly extends this further by providing a common target for many languages, providing a mechanism to ship assembly code that can interoperate with JavaScript runtimes. Static site generators and Jamstack offer a simpler approach for sites that might be heavy on content. They're often based around the use of APIs or Markdown for content, common shared layouts and templates for rendering pages, 
and also make use of JavaScript to make additional requests for data or for enabling integrations. They're starting to see adoption often as a replacement for larger website generation tools, such as WordPress. That's all for today, so thanks for attending, and I hope you are able to learn something new along the way.